Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You caught me just getting rid of my old phone. I've had that thing for two years, and it's time for an upgrade. The future is now. As fun as buying new iPhones can be, I can't completely move on from the past because the future scares the piss out of me. SB129 is the episode where Squidward accidentally freezes himself in the Krusty Krab freezer and tries to get back to his own time period with a time machine. This episode aired on December 31st, 1999, and is the first episode in which the main protagonist is a character other than Spongebob. In this case, it's Squidward. Sure, there were some episodes before this one where some of the other main characters have almost, if not as much, screen time as Spongebob, but in this episode, Squidward is the lead role and Spongebob only appears at the beginning and the end. Also, this page right here lists this episode as the first time where Spongebob doesn't play a primary role. The title, SB129, is supposed to represent the production code of the order in which this episode was made. SB means Spongebob, and 129 means it was the 29th segment produced of Season 1. It's interesting that the crew decided to turn it into the actual title. It's also funny how this episode was stated to be the 29th episode, when it turned out to be the 28th. Spongetron and the Primitive Sponge also appear here, but for some reason, I thought they were Spongebob and not separate characters. Same goes for thinking Patron and Primitive Star were just Patrick. Similar situation with characters like Spongegar, Patar, and Squawk from episode 106, Ugg, as well as Squidly from episode 127, Dunces and Dragons. That didn't last long though, I learned the truth about this at some point before I turned 11 years old. Since this episode aired on New Year's Eve 1999, there were some other Nicktoons episodes with futuristic themes to signify the new millennium. With all that out of the way, let's watch this episode over 20 years later since it's been over two decades since it premiered and see how well it holds up. So the episode starts up and a voice says the episode of the title and the title card is animated. Additionally, the opening credits usually have the undersea scenery with a blue text. This time, the opening credits use the same space background and same font as the title card. One Sunday morning in Bikini Bottom, the French narrator talks about Squidward's plans to start playing his clarinet. But right before he starts playing his clarinet, Spongebob's alarm clock goes off and jams his clarinet in his mouth. Spongebob asks Squidward if he wants to go jellyfishing, and thinks Squidward's angry fish shaking and clarinet squeaks are him saying yes. Squidward takes the clarinet out of his throat, and Spongebob and Patrick show up at his door. When Spongebob asks if he's ready, Squidward says he's not ready. Spongebob denied Patrick's obvious truth and kept repeatedly asking Squidward if he's ready, and Squidward kept saying no. After a little while, Squidward asks Spongebob why he's not at work, and Spongebob says the Krusty Krab is closed because it's Sunday. Even though Squidward doesn't like working at the Krusty Krab, how does he not know that the Krusty Krab's closed on Sundays? Squidward snuck away to the Krusty Krab to be alone, but before he started playing his clarinet, Spongebob and Patrick showed up to look for him. Squidward hid in the freezer, and Spongebob and Patrick left, thinking he went down to jellyfish fields already. After they were gone, the door was locked, but Squidward thought that somebody would come look for him soon. 2,000 years later. The freezer was frozen for 2,000 years, and the rusted hinge broke. Okay, one, how did the door to the freezer get locked? Squidward opened it. And two, did Spongebob or anybody else really not go into the freezer to get Krabby Patties at any point during those last 2,000 years? Spongetron, the future version of Spongebob, saw Squidward frozen in ice and freed him with a laser hammer. Squidward was dazed and asked if Spongebob rescued him, and Spongetron introduced himself as Spongetron. He welcomed Squidward to the future, and Squidward sees that every object in the world is chrome, with Spongetron saying that everything is chrome in the future. It's true, during my childhood only Google existed, and now these days Google Chrome exists. Spongetron introduces three clones, Spongetron X, Y, and Z, and says that there's now 486 letters of the alphabet, and Squidward starts to freak out about the future. I don't blame him. I own physical video games, Spongebob DVDs, and Blu-rays, and with digital-only SKUs of video game consoles and with streaming services, I'm still terrified for the future. Spongetron snaps Squidward out of his hysteria, and Squidward says he doesn't belong in this time period. The Spongetrons suggest to go jellyfishing, and Patron, the future version of Patrick, appears in the room to go jellyfishing as well. 
Squidward explains he's from a different time period, and SpongeTron tells him about the time machine. Squidward sees a lever and decides to go back to the past since SpongeBob exists in the future. I thought he was going to the past because that's where he's from, not because SpongeBob exists in the future. Also, that was SpongeTron, not SpongeBob. The time machine takes Squidward back in time, and Squidward ends up at the primordial sea. He thinks there's no Spongebob or Patrick, so he tries to play his clarinet, but he's stalked by some shadow creatures and runs into Primitive Sponge and Primitive Star, the primordial versions of Spongebob and Patrick respectively. Primitive Sponge and Star take curiosity at Squidward, but when they see a jellyfish, Primitive Sponge and Star start freaking out. Squidward walks away to a quiet spot, but whenever he tries to play his clarinet again, he's interrupted by Primitive Sponge and Star screaming because they're stinging themselves with the jellyfish. Squidward has them give him a layer of their loincloths, and he makes jellyfishing nets out of them and teaches them about jellyfishing. Did Squidward just invent jellyfishing? Primitive Sponge and Star walk away to start jellyfishing, and Squidward finally starts playing his clarinet. But the sour clarinet notes cause Primitive Sponge and Star to go ballistic, and they chase Squidward back to the time machine. Squidward accidentally snaps the lever off, causing the time machine to go through some kind of dimensions until it vanishes with a zap, and Squidward finds himself in an eerie, blank, white dimension. Squidward realizes he's finally alone, but then he hears various other voices saying, Alone, and Squidward starts to freak out. Alone must have been the secret word. Squidward keeps running, looking for the time machine, and doesn't find it until he stomps on the ground in frustration and desperation. He starts begging to go home because he misses his home and even Spongebob. The time machine takes him home and Squidward was so happy to be home and tells Spongebob and Patrick about what happened. Of course he wasn't happy enough to go jellyfishing and he asks who invented that game in the first place. They said Squidward invented it and when Squidward realized it, he stated he was going back to fix what he did and the episode ends. Ha! I called it! Squidward invented jellyfishing! So that was SB129, and that episode was pretty good. I will continue to praise this episode in a moment, but I want to address the bizarre scenes first. To get the biggest out of the way, was that freezer not even touched for 2,000 years? Squidward's face was right at the window of the freezer, so how could nobody have really seen him at all? Especially Spongebob since he goes into the freezer to get Krabby Patties to cook. Of course, this could be explained since when Squidward returned to the present, it was the time in which he went missing. But this was after Squidward invented jellyfishing during the primordial era. Jellyfishing, which is the reason why he ended up time traveling in the first place, which is known as a casualty loop. Regardless, he was still frozen at the Krusty Krab at a place where some of the workers would go in the first place. Okay, now I see why my grandma was confused by time travel. Also, I get that the time machine took Squidward to the white dimension because Squidward broke the lever, but I've always wondered why that little slot machine thingy was shown down there in the first place. There's a lot about time travel I don't know, but this is the only time I recall seeing this little thing. There's probably some other times where something like this occurred, but please don't call me out on this. Moving on, time to share a few fun facts about this episode. I kept calling the past sea the primordial sea. Primordial means at or from the very beginning of time. During the future scene, there's a calendar that says the date is March 6, 4017 AD. This means that the present scenes of this episode take place on March 6, 2017. Okay, so that means in less than 1,996 years, everything will be chrome, and there will be another 460 letters in the alphabet. Write that down. This shot of the primitive sponge became a meme around the internet, which also caused people to think this character is Spongegar. So, to clarify this for whoever was or is still confused, this is Spongegar, and this is the Primitive Sponge. Same goes with this being Patar, and this being Primitive Star. Now it's time to actually praise this episode. Despite everything I talked about up until now, I still love this episode. There are a lot of awesome moments here. I always loved the part at the beginning when Squidward kept opening and closing the door and Spongebob and Squidward kept going, Now? No. The can opener gag was pretty funny too, as well as the part when Patron appeared out of nowhere. I also laughed at the parts where Prince and Sponge and Star were screaming when Squidward tried to play the clarinet. Of course, the standout funny moment is arguably the part where Squidward screams, FUTURE! when he was freaking out. 
With this being the first episode with a character other than Spongebob in the lead role, with Spongebob playing a smaller role, it does prove that not every episode needs to have Spongebob in the lead role, and it's possible to have good episodes without Spongebob needing to be the protagonist of every episode. This episode was number 5 in the top 10 fan favorite episodes from the Ultimate Spongebob Sponge Bash, which celebrated the show's 10th anniversary in July 2009. As much as time travel can be confusing, it's nice when the show delves into this kind of stuff because it's not explored too often. And I like when the show dives into bizarre and surreal concepts like this one, which definitely help episodes like this stand out for more reasons than just the humor. In my opinion, this episode is a perfect blend of great comedy and surreal topics, and that is one of the reasons this episode stands out in a great way. SB129 is an awesome episode for a multitude of reasons. From the great comedy and jokes found here, to the surreal nature of this episode, to this being the first episode where Spongebob isn't in the lead and another character is in the lead role, there are a lot of great things about this episode. As much as I love the scenes that took place in the future in this episode, I really need to get over my fear of the future. Hey man, I'm here. Ready to play some Xbox One? Ah, uh, hell yeah. Where are the games? Oh, they're all downloaded into the system. Ah, they're all downloaded. Wait, they're all downloaded into the system? Yep, sure are. No, a console with all digital games is a sign of the future. Get that thing away from me. Well, I'm not off to a good start.